Have you ever noticed that the food you eat on an airplane never quite tastes the same as it does on the ground? Whether it's a chicken dish, a pasta meal, or even a simple cup of coffee, something always feels slightly off. Some people describe airplane food as bland and tasteless, while others think it has an odd aftertaste. But is it really the food itself? Or is there something about the environment at 30,000 feet that affects the way we experience flavors? Today, we're diving into the fascinating science behind why airplane food tastes different and what factors contribute to the change in our sense of taste while flying, right here on History of Simple Things. To understand why airplane food tastes different, we first need to look at how our sense of taste and smell work. Our tongues can detect five basic tastes, sweet, salty, sour, bitter, and umami. However, flavor is not just about what our taste buds perceive. It's also heavily influenced by our sense of smell. In fact, around 80% of what we think of as taste actually comes from our ability to smell food. This is why when you have a cold and your nose is blocked, food seems to lose its flavor. When you're flying, the high altitude and cabin conditions affect both your taste buds and your sense of smell, altering the way you perceive food. One of the biggest factors is the change in air pressure. At cruising altitude, most airplanes maintain a cabin pressure equivalent to that of a location about 6,000 to 8,000 feet above sea level. This lower pressure reduces the amount of oxygen in the blood and slightly numbs our taste buds. Studies have shown that our ability to detect sweet and salty flavors can drop by as much as 30% in these conditions. This means that food that would normally taste well-seasoned on the ground might seem dull and flavorless when eaten on a plane. Another major factor that affects the way food tastes on an airplane is the low humidity. Airplane cabins are extremely dry, with humidity levels around 10 to 20 percent, much lower than what we experience on the ground. To put that into perspective, the Sahara Desert has an average humidity of around 25 percent. This dry environment dries out our nasal passages, making it harder for us to perceive aromas. Since smell plays a crucial role in how we experience flavors, the lack of moisture in the air dulls our ability to enjoy food the way we normally would. Additionally, dry air can make us feel dehydrated, which can further impact our perception of taste. When our mouths are dry, we produce less saliva, which is essential for breaking down food and carrying flavors to our taste receptors. This is why some foods, especially those that rely on subtle flavors or delicate seasonings, can taste very different or even bland when eaten at high altitude. Believe it or not, the loud noise of the airplane cabin also plays a role in how we perceive taste. The constant hum of the engines, which can reach around 85 decibels, has been shown to influence our ability to taste food. A study conducted by researchers at Cornell University found that loud background noise can suppress sweet and salty flavors while enhancing umami, the savory taste found in foods like tomatoes, mushrooms, and soy sauce. This means that while your dessert might not taste as sweet as it normally would, a dish rich in umami like a tomato-based pasta or a mushroom risotto, might still taste relatively normal. This explains why airline meals often include dishes with strong umami flavors such as beef stews, tomato sauces, or soy-based marinades. Airlines have adapted their menus to include ingredients that can withstand the effects of altitude and still taste relatively good, even when our taste perception is altered. Knowing that food tastes different at high altitude, airlines have developed special methods to ensure that meals remain flavorful in the air. 
Many airline catering companies modify their recipes by increasing the levels of salt, sugar, and spices to compensate for the dulled sense of taste that passengers experience. For example, a pasta sauce that might taste perfect on the ground would be made with extra seasoning to ensure that it still tastes good when served on a flight. Additionally, airlines often use different cooking techniques to enhance flavors. Slow-cooked dishes like braised meats or stews tend to retain their taste better than grilled or fried items. This is because slow-cooked meals allow flavors to develop more deeply, making them more resistant to the effects of altitude. Similarly, food is often prepared with rich sauces to keep it from drying out, since the dry cabin air can make food lose moisture quickly. However, despite these adjustments, airline food still faces challenges when it comes to freshness and quality. Most in-flight meals are prepared hours before they are served, often in large-scale industrial kitchens near airports. The food is then chilled and transported to the aircraft, where it is reheated before being served to passengers. This reheating process can sometimes affect the texture and overall appeal of the food, making it less enjoyable than a freshly prepared meal. While most foods suffer from the effects of altitude, there is one surprising exception, tomato juice. Many passengers claim that tomato juice tastes better on an airplane than it does on the ground. This is actually backed by science. The same Cornell University study that examined background noise and taste found that umami flavors are enhanced in flight. Since tomato juice is naturally high in umami, it retains its strong, savory taste even at high altitude. This is one reason why so many people order tomato juice or Bloody Marys during flights, even if they don't normally drink them on the ground. So, the next time you find yourself on a flight wondering why your meal doesn't taste quite right, remember that it's not just in your head, it's science. The combination of low air pressure, dry cabin conditions, background noise, and the way our senses adapt at high altitude all contribute to the difference in taste. Airlines have spent years developing strategies to make food more enjoyable in the sky, but no matter how much they tweak their recipes, eating at 30,000 feet will never be quite the same as dining on solid ground. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.